<clears throat> okay, let's take a look at section 17b, which is called the measures of central tendency. And let's go ahead and abbreviate that with MCT. Now, in chapter 17a, what we did is we basically took our numerical data and we organized it. We also broke it down between con uh, discrete and continuous data. And once we go ahead and organize the data, the next thing that we want to do is we want to analyze it. Now, before we go about analyzing the data, we need to go ahead and make very clear a distinction that is going to run through throughout the chapter. And the distinction is between a population and a sample. Now, of course, it's going to be very simple for you to see what the relationship is there based upon that Venn diagram. But let's make it a little bit more concrete. Let's say, for example, that the population is going to be all of the students at St. Mark. A possible sample then could be all the grade 10 students at St. Moor. Now, of course, we could also go ahead and say that the grade 10 students at St. Moor are also can be considered the population as well, so long as if we go ahead and talk about a sample of that being, say, for example, all of the boys in the grade 10 class. So, it's going to be very important for you to recognize whether you're dealing with the population or the sample whenever we go ahead and start working with the analysis Okay, so let's take a look at how we can analyze <coughs> our data. And we're going to analyze our data firstly by looking at where our data tends to centralize itself about. So that's why we call this the measures of central tendency. The three that we have is the mean, which would be considered the average. The median, which would be considered the middle value, so long as you sort your information from lowest to highest value. And the mode would be the most frequent value that you have. So let's go ahead and take a look first of all at the mean, because this is really the one that's going to have the most calculation to it. It is notice that if you have all of your values, all you're going to do is you're going to add all about, you're going to take all of your values, add them up, and you're going to divide by the total number of values that you have, which is how we calculate the average. Now notice that there's two symbols that we have, one to the left and one to the right. Now notice that these two symbols over here are representing the same thing as the mean, but notice that one of these is for the population and the other is for the sample. So if you ever talk about the population mean, you're talking about this right here, this Greek character mu. And if we go ahead and talk about the sample mean, then we go ahead and use the X bar notation. Okay? Now, of course, we'll come a little bit later in the chapter, we'll figure out exactly why we need to make that difference. But for now, let's just go ahead and make sure that we know whether or not we're dealing with the sample or the population when we determine the mean. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Uh, I went ahead and created a very simple uh, frequency diagram. We're dealing with discrete data, because notice that all we have are the different values here. And notice that this is the frequency during which these values actually occur. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at this particular frequency diagram or this frequency chart, let's go ahead and put it in tabular form. So the value of 2 occurs just once. The value of 4 occurs just once. The value of 5 occurs just once. The value of 6 occurs twice. And the value of 7 occurs once. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and talk about these values, Let's go ahead and determine whether and what the average, the mean, and the mode is, or are. Okay, now if we wanted to go ahead and calculate the mean, now do we consider this a population or do we consider this a sample? Let's assume for this case that these are the only values that you have, and if that's the case, then we're dealing with the population. So the population is going to be, that population mean is going to be equal to 2, right, plus and then there's one four plus, there's one five plus, there's two sixes, so two times six, plus there's one seven. And then if I go ahead and I divide this, of course, by the total number of values that I have, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, then what I'm coming out then with my for my population mean would be, what is that, that's 30 divided by 6, which is going to be equal to 5. Okay, so if I was to go ahead then and talk about where that is, this right over here would be the mean. 
This right there is the mean. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the middle value now, or the median. How do we calculate that? Basically, what we need to do is we need to organize our information in the order in which they're written. So from the lowest value that we have, which of course is a 2, a 4, a 5, we have two sixes and a 7. Now, if I go ahead and take a look at this right here, I've organized it in numerical order. I need to pick the middle value. Now, notice there's six values here, and so really there is no middle value, because if, if, uh, if we were to go ahead and talk about that middle value, it would be here. So in order for us to go ahead and determine what that value is, we're just going to say that the mean, uh, the median, is then going to be equal to 5 plus 6 divided by 2. So the median then is going to be equal to 11 over 2, which is the same thing as 5.5. So that's what our median is. And if I was to go ahead and draw that, the median is at 5.5. Uh, let's use a different color here. Uh, let's use blue. There we go. This is 5.5. This is where my median is. Okay. Now, if I was to go ahead and take a look at the mode for this particular set of data, well, the most frequently occurring data is actually going to be 6 because it occurs twice. So the mode in this case is 6. Now, you can have more than one mode. Uh, and if you do, you're going to be calling it bimodal. If there's three modes, it's trimodal. So this is these are the three measures of measures of central tendency that you can use to go ahead and analyze the data.